This video will show you how an FMEA characteristic integration is made possible by the use of a control plan. So the first thing we do is navigate to the FMEA monitor by way of logistics, quality management, quality planning, failure mode and effects analysis, and we'll go to this FMEA monitor. We already have an FMEA set up in the system, so we'll have this FMEA bullet high or populated and this 2B process bullet populated as well. Then we'll click execute. If you wanted to see FMEAs that were completed or questionless, any of that, um, you could highlight those highlight those fields. So once we click execute, we'll get a list of FMEAs that still need to pro be processed. We'll highlight the line item we want to look at, and then we'll click this FMEA component button. You'll get a message down here that says the FMEA will be displayed in another window. I already have it open, so we'll just jump over there. Once your FMEA is displayed, you'll highlight your FMEA line item and click the expand all button. As you can see, we have a function list here called the spring mechanism and a few more down below. The upper body, lower body, ink cartridge function list. But we'll focus on this top one, the spring mechanism function list for now. We have two functions in our function list, a spring and a thumb mechanism. For the purposes of this video, we'll just stay on this spring function. We have a defect up here called jammed and a cause linked to that defect called the spring too tight. And we have a preventative action called the first piece test and a detection action called the spring gauge. We also have an effect here called the ink not seated properly. If you look, you can notice these characteristics are listed, and this is in an attempt to reduce the RPN. So what we've done is add these characteristics to our FMEA plan because they're going to help us uh, reduce the occurrence of this spring being too tight and if we point out really quickly here on the cause we'll see an RPN value and that's a normal way to evaluate FEMAs and if we jump up one more to the FMEA ballpoint FEMA line itself we'll also see an RPN value under this results tab 80. So you, you'll you notice that it was the same as a uh, RPN value here. That's because we've went ahead and evaluated a couple of the things that need need to be calculated in order to get an RPN. And actually we value, evaluated all three. So what we'll do from here is we'll take a look at this control plan tab that's what the CP stands for and we'll highlight this line exercise 3 because that's the control plan we want to look at and we'll just make note of that here so we'll back out of here I don't want to save my data so I'll say no back out and once we're here at the navigation tree, we'll go to the control plan and we'll clear that out and enter exercise three. And here you can see we have a material listed. This is the same material that was on our FMEA plan. And the plant 3000 is the same plant that was on our FMEA plan. You can see we have a green light, and I'll go ahead and explain that in a little more detail in just a minute. But I want to let you know that when we 
enter the material and plant here, that is how the control plan is pulling in the inspection plan from this plant for this specific material. You can also enter this material and plant on this items tab. You can see there's a column for your material and a column for your plant. So this would be another way of entering in the inspection plan. So if we jump over to our FMEA tab, we'll notice that an FMEA has already been entered and it's the F or F-1 that we were just looking at in the FMEA area just a moment ago. Now if you were going to enter an FMEA plan in here because there was nothing there, you'd want to make sure you're in edit mode. But of course that wouldn't be a problem because you would probably just be creating it at that point. But for sake of argument, we'll put it into change mode. And we'll go ahead and try to explain these traffic lights a little bit and how they're working in the control plan. So we'll jump over to this structure tab and we'll highlight this first line item and we'll click the expand subtree icon. We'll close up these guys down here because this is in production and good issue. But I want to point out here that your FMEA and the two characteristics that we were looking at are listed here. And that they're also consumed up top. You'll notice that this is an FMEA if we hover over it. And if we hover over this one, it's an inspection plan. And this one is actually a routing. You can see our spring gauge from our FMEA is consumed in our routing. Now if this was the only characteristic that was consumed by the control plan we would get a yellow light on our FMEA tab. This would be yellow because only some of the characteristics were consumed. Because both of these are consumed this diameter check is consumed in the inspection plan. We're getting the green light over here on our FMEA tab. If none of them were consumed, we would get a red light. And that's the basic idea behind the control plan. You want to link the FMEA to the inspection plan to ensure that all your characteristics are being consumed and I'll expand this and show you that this actually says characters contained in structure so the control plan is a way of ensuring that your FMEA characteristics are being consumed somewhere in the inspection plan now if you would like more information on how to create your own FMEA or your own control plan Please inquire with QMS Incorporated about the FMEA and control plan videos. Thank you very much.